It seems the Danes can't take the heat because they've banned three types of Korean spicy noodles for being too spicy. Sam Yang Foods, the company behind these noodles, has said there's no quality issue and that their products aren't banned in any other country around the world. So is there a legit safety concern around these products? Or are they Danish, just not used to spicy foods? The Danish Food Authority banned these instant ramen noodles because it said they had a dangerously high level of spiciness and in particular, they wanted to highlight that this would be uh, dangerous for children and especially due to the social media challenges where teens and other children are sort of daring each other to withstand just extreme amounts of heat and spiciness, including some challenges with these Korean fire noodles. In the Danish Food Authority, they tested the spice levels of these instant noodles and their conclusion basically was there's an overly high dose of capsaicin and in many people, especially young people or vulnerable people, this high dose can lead to acute poisoning. Basically, people will have a response where they uh, have nausea, vomiting, uh, GI uh, discomfort. Now, capsaicin is the naturally occurring molecule in chili peppers that causes, you know, our mouth to feel hot, feel that spiciness. And this is a great example of just because something is natural doesn't mean it's safe. And if you don't believe me, check out my other video where I talk about 10 plant-based foods that are actually trying to kill you. So natural does not mean good or safe. There's plenty of natural things that are toxic. Okay, but just how hot are these noodles? When tested, the version that's called the three times spicy and hot chicken, that ranged anywhere from 8,000 to 14,000 on the Scoville heat scale. And if you've never heard of the Scoville scale, it just ranks spiciness or uh, pungency of different foods. So zero is no spiciness, up to now pepper X is the spiciest pepper that we have. So in this range from like 8,000 to 14,000, this is really equivalent to a sort of jalapeno pepper or a serrano pepper. But there's actually a lot more hot chili peppers that are way more spicy. To be honest, I think the real problem lies with social media, not necessarily with a specific food product because we've seen this trend before. Before the fire noodles, we had the one chip challenge where people were eating this one extremely spicy uh, tortilla chip. It was made with the Carolina Reaper peppers, which are super high up on the Scoville scale. And the challenge was basically eat this one chip and see how long you can last without eating or drinking anything else. We know this challenge ended up sending five Germans to the hospital and one of them who had a pre-existing condition ended up being checked into the ICU, which is terrifying. In the US, a 14 year old died from the one chip challenge, that same challenge, after going into cardiac arrest. Now he also had a pre-existing condition. He had a congenital heart defect, but after the teen's death, the food company that made those chips, they voluntarily recalled the chips and you can no longer get them. These extremely spicy foods have been causing trouble for quite a while now. But was it the right call for the Danish Food Authority to just outright ban these products? I mean, they haven't been banned in any other countries around the world. There's no quality issue. There's no microbial issue. So here's my thoughts. One thought from a food scientist on what might have been some better alternatives and why I think the ban is a bit targeted and unjustified. I was surprised that, you know, like straight out of the gate, they went to a full out ban. I would have thought maybe they'd require something like a warning label to be put on these products, you know, make it very bold, make sure people know this can cause illness or acute poisoning. It really shouldn't be eaten by children. Like this is like an extremely high level of capsaicin of spiciness. And this could be a, you know, like an icon a label we have on a lot of cleaning products or bleach that really with young children or toddlers, you need to be super careful with how you use it. Another approach that I think may have been better than a full out ban would be why not just set a legal limit for how much capsaicin is allowed in food products, right? Like what should we say is the legal highest dose of like spiciness or capsaicin in food? 
And of course, the food authorities can make sure at this dose, it's safe for everyone to eat. Teenagers will be fine. Kids will be fine. We are calling it the limit there. This way, the ban also doesn't seem to just target that one company. And I think it would also help in the future because you're not going to see more and more spicy products launched that are really at this high level of spiciness and might endanger some people. My last thought is that stores, even grocery stores, they still sell a lot of items that can be harmful to kids and even adults if they're used in the wrong way. I mean, you can buy bleach, alcohol, cigarettes, junk food, like you name it. My college roommate, for example, had a peanut allergy. If she ate peanuts, uh, touched peanuts, you know, was around peanut butter, she could die. Yet in the cafeteria, there were still peanuts. In the grocery store, we're still selling peanuts, which I just mean to say, I don't know if banning is the right idea because we can't protect everyone unless we ban a lot of different things. But I'm curious what you think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below.